Hello all of you beautiful creative geniuses out there. I wanted to show you today how I created this piece. I called it Coral Dream because it reminds me of being on the bottom of the ocean. It has rich turquoise colors, teal, orange, ultramarine blue, and it's really yummy. I just really resonate with these colors. So I hope you enjoy. First things first, spray your canvas with a little bit of water. Now I'm using golden fluid acrylics in Thalo Turquoise, and no, this is not a paid sponsorship. I wish it was because there would be cha-ching in my bank account, but it is not. So I am just being of service because I know there's tons of people out there just like me who are stuck at home because of the COVID pandemic, and I want to be of service and share my techniques to hopefully inspire you guys to paint because it's really important for our mental health right now. So with that said, I spread the paint around with a paintbrush really lyrically with I'm listening to some loud music being really expressive using this beautiful handy wedge here and just carving out some shapes being really loose with it you don't need to make it perfect this is the underpainting um, just go with what your soul is telling you and how your how your spirit is telling you to paint I want to encourage you guys to be really loose with this process. It's going to take a little bit of time to realize what works for you in terms of the underpainting. Don't try to create the foreground in this process because this turquoise layer is going to be buried under all the other layers we're going to put on top of it. So just experiment, have fun, put on some music, move the paint around, let it do what it does. And when it looks good, stop 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 don't keep going because then you will definitely erase and buff out all the magic and all of the strokes that you put in before trust me i do it all the time here's a little trick spray a little bit of water on any spot use a dry towel and sop up some of the moisture and it gives a different effect. It even gives a brighter highlight, exposing some of the canvas underneath. And I like that. Okay, so if ultramarine blue was edible, I would eat it because it is so electric and rich and it just, it speaks to my soul. And I don't know, I think it because it's in the middle of violet and indigo and blue, I just really love it paired with turquoise. I am creating sort of a vignette, an outline, creating some depth in the corners. And you can start to already see, this is only the second coat of paint, how, it's, how the painting is starting to shape itself. And yes, to some extent, I'm telling the paint what to do, but for the most part, the paint is telling me where it wants to go. Okay guys, I know you're impatient like me, but it's really important that you let every layer of paint dry before you move on. Because if you don't, it's gonna be one muddy mess. That's why these pieces take a long time to do because I'll put one layer down and then I gotta wait until it's completely dry. And then I'll put another layer down and then wait until it's completely dry. So one piece could take two weeks when I'm only working on it like 10 minutes at a time. <laughs> this is cadmium orange, full body. I used a spatula to put it on and I am buffing it into the canvas right now because I want it to create a muted shadow and the orange with the blue we all know that complementary colors cancel each other out and it's creating this interesting shade that is gonna be to our benefit a little later on and you'll see
more of Mr. Ultramarine Blue in the edges, putting layers on top of layers on top of layers. And that's how we get this really lyrical effect of moving energy in the painting. Like it's just a freeze frame cotton time of something that was moving. And that's probably the definition of the type of work that I like to create. Going back in with the cadmium orange, using a spatula, full body paint, it's gonna create these little skips and give us some pretty awesome texture. Make sure, I'm gonna repeat again, that everything underneath this step and all the steps before is completely dry because if for some reason you do not like what you create, you can simply spray some water and gently rub it off and start over again. So sometimes these strokes are going to end up in the forefront of the painting and I don't exactly like how they look so sometimes I erase them. I am just buffing it out with a paper towel right now because I want to create depth and movement. So I kind of always put on paint, rub it off, put on paint, rub it off and that's what helps create all the intricate layers. Now I'm going back in with ultramarine blue and you can start to see how stacking the colors is now increasing the depth. I'm freeforming it. I can't explain how the paint is telling me where it wants to go. It's just what it does. I'm sure a lot of you can relate because once you put the color on the painting, you use your, your creative genius like turns on and you're like, okay, this is what I'm going to do next. And that's what I love about abstract painting because it is a feeling. It's a moment in time and it's an, a direct expression of representation of my life right now i would love to hear from you guys please leave me a note in the comment section if you have the same relationship with your paintings and your art and you allow the medium to tell you what it wants to go all right so spatula full body teal we're going in, we are creating some expressive strokes and the teal on top of the orange like is incredible to my eyes. It pops out of the canvas. Um, it like seriously does something to my brain. I think it's really incredible the relationship between the two. Not all complementary colors does that to me, but specifically orange and this color teal, my eyes are like, uh, what is going on? It is incredibly yummy. And going in, putting on paint, rubbing it off, putting on paint, rubbing it off. And you can see me doing that more again. So I hardly ever use black in my paintings because I feel like it's a really dark color it absorbs all the light and sometimes ultramarine blue really layered on each other is dark enough for me but for this painting i want to accentuate the glow in the center i want to accentuate the teal and i want to bring out the tones of the ultramarine blue so i'm going with black putting a little bit on my brush and buffing it around and not adding a lot of paint just kind of like kissing the painting with a little bit of black For my last and final trick, I am putting on the phthalo turquoise that we originally started with and just creating a little translucent layer to add some more movement to the painting. And I have learned to stop my painting like 10 steps before I actually think it's done because so many times 
I've looked at my process photo and I'm like, wow, my painting is amazing. Well, it was like 10 steps ago and now it's just a big old mess. So I would love to hear from you guys too if you experience the same sort of dynamic and when you're like, oh man, I should have stopped a long time ago because now I hate it. So that's part of being an artist, I think, is to know when your idea is expressed enough and to stop a little bit before that. So that pretty much sums it up. Thank you for coming to my Tutorial Tuesdays. I am going, I'm committing myself to coming out with a new video on Tuesday because I want to hold myself accountable. So I'm putting out into the universe that that's going to happen. So we're going to go for that, go with that for now. Please support, like, turn on the notifications button so you know when a new tutorial is out. Share this with everybody you possibly can because I'm just starting this channel and I could use all the support that you guys could give me and uh, feel free to ask any questions i'll try to respond uh, if i can and sending love to you all try this coral dream painting soon i'm sure you'll do a phenomenal job